The heavyweights this bout scheduled for four rounds. The referee for this contest is Mel Miller. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with silver trim and weighing in at 194 pounds. He's from Nanaimo, Canada, and brings a professional record of one and zero. Oh. Introducing Shane Kid Thunder Sutcliffe. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the solid black trunks, and weighing in at 245 pounds. He's from Memphis, Tennessee, and brings a professional record of four and one, three KOs. He calls himself the king in the heavyweight division because his name is Paul Elvis Presley. All right, boys, you know the rule was clean. Keep your heads up, the button, keep your blows up, okay? Good luck. So there's a look at Shane Kid Thunder Sutcliffe. Kid is the operable word there. Interesting story, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And down to the end of Longwood Street, there's the king right there. Paul Elvis Presley, Juan Watt is a professional fighter. Both good guys here. So good entertainment value in this one anyway. And there are 2,000 Elvis Presley impersonators across the country. But none of them fight. I was just going to say it's the only boxing one. The interesting thing is he doesn't sing. Kid Thunder, an interesting guy. He's 18 years old, allegedly. Comes out of Nanaimo, British Columbia. Good athlete. He's only been fighting for about six months. He sent a tape to Top Rank saying, what do you think? Can I fight? He's taken some karate lessons. He's won a bunch of tough guy contests because that's all you could fight as a kid up in Canada. And that's what he is. He's a tough guy. And that was a pretty darn good right hand. And after he was in those tough man competitions, he was not allowed to compete on an amateur level in Canada, so he was not able to hone those skills over time. But he'll get some very good supervision now. And there's a case of those ropes again. I give it about 9-5. You drop off the high and low score for those, and one and a half off the top rope. I wasn't pleased with the dismount there. Yeah, you gotta land well. And another good left hand. Such a tough guy. And always a fast starter. Now the tough man competitions were two 90-second rounds and he scored 75% knockouts. Yeah, he said in his first fight it was a four-rounder. He'd never been four three-minute three rounds, and he said, I thought I'd better pace myself, so he wanted a decision. He said, tonight I'm going after this guy, and that's what he's done in the first round. And, and to be honest with you, Dave, he's not quite as raw as I thought we would see. He looks pretty finely honed, and he's got a good idea what he wants to do with his shots. He can put punches together. Jesse Reed, who I truly believe to be one of the really good trainers in America. Good combination, left hand and right behind it. Jesse is in the corner of Shane Sutcliffe tonight. He's been working with him for the last week or so, and I have an idea that this could be a pretty good marriage. Jesse will get him working on angles and thinking in punch sequence, as he's done with many of his world champions. Orlando Canizal is among them. Shane Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe right now, you can just tell, doesn't really even know how to throw a jab. He's strictly going for the power punches right now. Doesn't really have a lot of boxing skills, but that's something that can be taught. Yeah, that can be taught. You can't teach heart. But he's got that. A football player, a basketball player, a hockey player. It is interesting, though, that he sends an audition tape to top rank and gets the job. We'll be back into round one. So you look at Shane Sutcliffe as he comes out for round number two, and Jesse Reed telling him to work the body a little bit. Got a big target there. That was not the body, I know that. And Sutcliffe had the slight edge. It looked like he had a better power shot, too. Presley doing a little bit more reacting than starting things off. Well, 
his future will be marketed along obvious lines. Yes. Should Presley win, he will be put in the Elvis Presley suite at the Las Vegas Hilton before his next fight in November, should he get by this one. Perish the thought. Come on, take one around there. Use your jam. I think Sutcliffe wants that suite himself. Or something just as good. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot your jam. Shoot your jam. Don't wait. Don't wait. That's the way. Jab and get in. Jab and get in. Presley's starting his jab off from the side. He's not compact. And there's a big opening there for Sutcliffe. You want to have the left hand a little bit in front of the right and then step with it. He's been more like squared and throwing it out to the side leaves the whole left side of his face open. Jab your way in, A little blood from the nose now of Shane Sutcliffe. I'm sure he's used to that if he's been in tough man contests. Presley able to muscle Sutcliffe, clearly the bigger of the two. He did it on the break and got away with it. And a right hand by Sutcliffe, and that got Presley's attention. A lot of power generated by Sutcliffe. Nice leverage, good compact shots, not too wide. Counter left by Presley. Sutcliffe breathing through his mouth a little bit now. Sutcliffe definitely wants to press the fight to be the one who forces everything to happen. Presley's reacting and has gotten slower in this round. Presley living in Kansas City now. Did some work as an amateur with John Brown, who of course right from working with Tommy Morrison. Shoot it, Jane, shoot it. He's waiting too long, though. Right Studying everything. Yeah, look at the counter. He had some success with the counter left hand of the right of Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe's short now. Coming to the end of round number two now. And neither man really did a lot in that second round. Sutcliffe can charm the judges. That one misses. That one's a grazing shot, but it gets in. And that one gets in as well. He keeps Presley from throwing shots. Didn't do much in the latter part of the round, though. Neither man really did very much in the round. There's a left hand and the right behind it. And that drives Presley backward. The timing is a transition that Sutcliffe will have to make from his tough man days, where there were 90 second rounds. Each one is spread out twice as much as that now. That's and a, a full body slam. Full takedown, yeah. Got the crowd on its feet for the first time tonight. That's a little throwback to the tough guy days. You can see Sutcliffe through the first two rounds, doing a little bit more. I know you gave him the first two rounds on your part. Maybe he's been just a little more aggressive. And as we said, two rounds to none for Sutcliffe. And it's hard to come back in a four-round fight. Yeah. Theoretically, the best press they can do unless he knocks him down is a draw. That's why it's so crucial to get off the mark in four-round fights. Fighters like it when they go up to sixes. There's a little bit more room for error. Sutcliffe looks like he's a bit tired. That's the first time he has really shown the effect where he's slowed his punching down. Presley has to seize it here. He's one at a time. Yeah, this is a case over the last, I'd say, three minutes. Half of this round and last half of the last round. More a case of what Presley hasn't done than what Sutcliffe has. Come on. Whoa, and they go right have. over the ropes. The ropes came down. We, we knew that, waiting for that. We, we knew that had to happen yeah. tonight. And now we're going to have to repair the ropes here. So we're going to have a technical timeout, which is going to help Sutcliffe. Yes, it is, because he was very tired, really showing the fatigue for the first time. And this ring post, as you can see, has been around for a while. I think they used it for the Dempsey fight in Shelby, didn't they? Might have been. And there's Presley leaning in. And 
This was not one of the ropes that was affected before. And there you have all the King's horses and men <laughs> putting down there. And you've got all that weight on those ropes. Hey, bantamweights would not have done that. No, that's true. <laughs> Five of them would not have done that. But a look at Sutcliffe in the corner, and he looks like a tired fighter right now. He is sitting in his own corner, and he looks tired. He really looks tired, and I think this is going to really do him a world of good. They took those turnbuckles out to make the ring bigger for Jeff Mayweather. He wanted a bigger ring than he was having the last time in Montana, so they gave him a little more from 17-10 to 18-1 to do that. The turnbuckles were removed, and I think people wish the turnbuckles were back. They may have to call somebody in from Billings for this one. I don't know. This could take a while. Well, speaking of the King, a reminder that this Sunday, Winston Cup with the break. You don't see Presley objecting either. No, that's true. No, he wasn't exactly uh, on his twinkle toes there. Didn't lose any momentum from that. But he's going to have to start to do more. There's no question about it. And, of course, still to come, our main event, Todd Foster, and that's who the folks here in Miles City that's paid good. to see, and it. Jeff Mayweather, and that, that's going to be a tough over. fight, I think, for Foster. Yeah, he's had a couple of nice confidence-building fights after the Jimmy Paul loss, and now he's in with somebody a lot better, and he's got to step it up. So the work continues on the ring ropes as they have gotten reattached, but... are still tightening them. These are the little things you know you could take for granted when you're in the casinos all the time and the, everything is consistent. You go to the outdoors, remote places, and a lot of wild cards come into play. I'll tell you, this rope that we talked about before, between the red corner and the neutral corner, is not in great shape either, right where Presley is now. Second getting a second wind here. And he really only needs this round. And I'll tell you, those ropes are still a big problem. That was a good left hand by Presley. And there they go again. And that would take a point away from Presley for pushing him over the ropes. And that's going to cost him a fight. It's one thing to lean on your opponent strategically. It's another thing to just whip him in there. We just pushed him again into the ropes. And he's toying with a DQ here. I think the way this fight started for Presley, taking a point away from him, is really like robbing the poor. He didn't have anything to give away. And again, those ropes, even though Presley did push him, normally he would have just pushed him into the ropes instead of over the ropes, and they still are sagging a great deal. And I, they might have taken another point away. And it was a good right hand by Sutcliffe at the bell. So when we come back, Presley will have one round and he's going to have to get Sutcliffe out of there if he's going to win the fight. Push off, it's a penalty. In boxing, you lose the ropes. No push over, though. No push over as it ended up being. And there you see Presley getting warned. He did that a few times and the point gets deducted. Final round. Well, I'll tell you, the stoppage because of the tightening of the ropes is a real favor to Shane Sutcliffe. And then it was compounded by the point being taken away from Presley. He was showing the effects of fatigue for the first time. And Presley now goes after Sutcliffe. I don't think he has any choice. And his entire persona, marketing tool, is all coming down to the fact he needs a miracle here. It's so hard to score that come from behind knockout. If you're in front, that's one thing. But when you need it desperately, it rarely comes. Blood from the nose, a lot of blood from the nose of Sutcliffe now. Kind of blood from the nose that makes you think you might have gotten your nose broken. Well, Sutcliffe with two minutes left. And he would win the fight, I would think. The key right now is he's staying in there and not letting the nose dominate his performance. Referee looking at it very closely. 
He would stop it if given an excuse, but if Sutcliffe keeps going like this, there will be no excuse. He's I trying would, to stay in there. Yeah, I would think he would give him, the referee that is, would give him every opportunity here. Break, 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 get out. Those ropes are a disaster. Break. Yeah, that's really a big problem. Of course, they hit him with a break, and Sutcliffe woofing at him. Jeff Mayweather wanted a, a bigger one. I think he's cut it by three feet, practically, because no one's going to go near that rope. It won't affect those guys quite as much. These guys, of course, are considerably bigger, almost a foot taller. He's pressing it. They both got there with left hands. of going to school, I think, for Shane Sutcliffe, and he does have a lot to learn, but you can see some potential. A bigger fighter, heavier fighter, who leaned on him and gave him a hard time, but Sutcliffe out-hustled. He landed some good bombs early to get some respect, and he's been able to push it through. He should be sending the King to Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah, very good. I like that. Good right hand by Sutcliffe. Presley says it doesn't hurt, which means it hurts. And this one is just about over. And it is. Well, it did have some entertainment value. It might not have been pretty. But it was as advertised. Well, Presley made a lot out of the entrance and everything like that. Seems like the perfect place for that kind of a thing. I think so. I think so. You want to open in a small town, don't you? You don't want to take the act right to Broadway. That's right. That's right. Work out the kinks. So we await the decision between Shane, Kid Thunder, Sutcliffe, who will be a big hero. And you can see very even in terms of punches landed, much more so than I would have thought, to tell you the truth. Yeah, as far as the power, uh, Sutcliffe 48 to 33 in the power connection. I think that's the key stat in this fight. The punch numbers is one thing. And the point being taken away from Presley is critical, too. Yeah, I think that really could be a factor. But I think it, your point is very well taken that Sutcliffe got the respect of Presley early with the power punches. Let's go to Michael Buffer, find out who won it. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Lyle Brookman scores about 39-35. Everett Crumb scores at 40-34. to 34. And Joe Antonetti scores at 38-36 for the winner by unanimous decision. Shane Kid Thunder! Well, Shane Sutcliffe has run his record to 2-0 and, oh and has done a very good job. When we come back, the main event, Todd Foster and Jeff Mayweather. Don't go away, we're coming right back. <laughs>